as the organization grew, we were doing intro events where people were like, come do your, and it got a little salesy, which I was never really comfortable with. That felt icky. Mm-hmm. Um, so anyway, like that's, that's 2001, kind of right before 9-11. And I decide, um, cause they really wanted people in, in hindsight, I recognized what they were doing is they just wanted coaches and then coaches would staff the trainings. And they told me you can become a coach and you get to staff the trainings and shadow and do the trainings for free. Mm-hmm. Like I can be in there, staff, you know, do coffee, whatever, and whatever. And then they started running them in New York City. So I was in New York City, and the only way I could take their curriculum was take a three-hour bus ride to, to Albany, New York. And then they started setting one up in New York City. Mm-hmm. So for me, it was kind of an easy thing of, okay, I can still audition, be in New York, have both these things. I actually was sitting down budgeting stuff. Like I figured out I went out once or twice a week. I would spend at least $300 you know, going out and doing things that weren't towards my goals to be involved with the ongoing curriculum is $300 a month. It just felt like I cut that out of my life and I invest it. That was, it was a no brainer for me. Practical. Um, and so I'm involved as a coach for probably about another year and a half. And then it just dawns on me because the only place you could take it was, it was Albany, like the intensive. And then you could do the weekly classes in New York and it just wasn't a, a well-oiled machine. Mm. And and I, I figured out pretty quickly, there's no way you're going to get people to put sashes on, bow down to a vanguard, and do these rules and rituals. And I just said, fuck this, I'm out. But I wasn't overt with it. I was like, cool, you guys have something good. I'd send a friend or two there under circumstances. I always kept in the back of the mind in conversations with people because I would say, hey, if that's what you're looking for, I did this and this was fun. And I'd send a couple friends here and there. And I wasn't involved with the organization for about, Let's say three years, but it wasn't it wasn't volatile. It wasn't like I was, you know, pissed at anyone. I knew anything was going on. It was literally a course that I would send friends to, and Nexium didn't exist as its title yet. It was called Executive Success Programs, and that was the only company that existed at the time. And then that Forbes article came out in two thousand three, and you need to understand this this organization started in nineteen ninety eight, and in about three or four years. The president of the organization, Nancy Salzman, was working with Edgar Bronfman, head of Seagram's Liquor and head of the Jewish Halal Center. Mm -hmm. So head of of some very powerful in religion, head of someone, I forget the woman's name, at Black Entertainment Television. She was coaching them. And then there was someone from Mexico, kind of head of medicine in Mexico. She She was in the ear of three pretty influential people in a very short amount of time. So... It was kind of a ragtag on its grassroots level, but there was an aspect of it where it had gotten to some influential people in a short amount of time. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching the video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And of course, check out one of these other clips for all the latest tips and insights. We'll see you next time.